Well, good Monday morning to you, and welcome to our Monday morning live edition of the Doctors Nutrition Show. I'm your host, Jim Tabor, along with Dr. Jim and Janine Fox of Doctors Nutrition, located on Camel Rain Road in Gulfport, just south of Pass Road. We do this every Monday morning, and it is a live call-in show. Uh, numbers are uh, on the screen at 896-0713 or 800-349-0713. So you are welcome to call in and ask questions regarding our topic of the day uh, or anything regarding your health because this was what the show is all about, trying to help you live a healthier lifestyle. So uh, this morning is um, something that um, a lot of people don't think about, but I mean, it could just pop up on you like that unexpectedly. We're talking about yeast infections and fungi. Yeah. Yeah, and other fungi, right. Fungi, and actually, a lot fungi. of people do think about them because a lot of people have a problem. Right. Um, That's we true. do see, you know, think about it. We live in a hot, moist area. Right. And that is what fungus loves. It's is, an incubator. It, it is. It's <laughs> hot moisture is definitely what it likes. So we see tons of people with candida or yeast infections. Now, well, well, what a is a yeast infection? Well, it's anytime there's a yeast overgrowth. Yeah. Because we all have a little bit of yeast in us. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually kind of normal to have a little bit. Yeah. It's just when it gets overgrown and causes a problem that it, that you call it more of an infection. Yeah. Now, everybody thinks about yeast infections being vaginal, of right. course. And that is just, that's... Tip of the iceberg. Exactly. That's just not... A lot of people that actually have vaginal yeast infections, a lot of times it is everywhere. It's not just there. That's where they see it. Now, people have heard of thrush which is when it's in your mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so people, when they can see it, they're more likely to say, oh, it's a yeast infection. Right, which um, is kind of funny because uh, when you talk about thrush with horses, it's in their hooves. Right. Is it really? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah, not, I, I don't know horses. Well, so I, I, yeah. well I used to own horses, so yeah. you, I mean, and, so and, it? and it smell, and it, yeah, and it, yeah. it's not the greatest smelling stuff in yeah. the world. Well, even you have to clean dogs, a lot of times they get in their paws. Yeah. So it's probably yeah. the same thing mm -hmm. because yeah. mm -hmm. dogs will get it really bad. I just talked to somebody last week that they called because their dog had a, a, a really bad um, fungus and they were on all antifungals and everything but she was saying her poor little feet were still so bad mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so yes it can get it can get anywhere and when you start talking about fungus I mean athlete's foot is fungus jock itch is a fungus mm -hmm. I mean there's yeah. there's fun there's a lot of different things that fall into that category and they don't always necessarily be the exact same yeast mm -hmm. candida yeah. is a lot of them um, but there it can cause a lot of problems now, one of the things that I find a lot in people, and so we want to tell people out there listening that this also usually means that you have a yeast problem, is um, women that come in where they have a rash under their boobs and everywhere there's tight and it gets almost raw and they don't realize that's what it is because you can get rid of that because we deal with women like that all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's one question I'll ask people when I start suspecting it and you know, something on the blood work looks like they have a chronic, you know, maybe a chronic fungus or something like that on the, on the on differential. And I'll ask them and they'll be like, yeah, how'd you know? And I'm like, and so they don't realize they can get rid of it because it gets to hurting. It mm -hmm. hurts. Yeah, I'm sure. So there are things, and that's one reason we want to tell everybody. Well, what causes them? Well, well it caught yeast inside your body yeah. mm -hmm. and it comes out through the skin. Okay. Yeah. Well, and actually, if you did, I remember back in micro, we used, would have to do the swab and grow it in a culture and so on. And some of the stuff that would grow just off a swab off your skin, I mean, wash your hands and then do a swab. Still and, gross and, stuff. And it still grows stuff that you're like, oh my God. Um, you know, <laughs> oh yeah. And then if you do your nose and your ears and stuff like that. Oh, oh we just, don't even go, yeah. go there. It, 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 it's scary. Okay. But you know, the thing is, is we have in the normal microbiome, like she said, you know, we've all got some of these candida. There's, there's like different species of candida in us all the time. They're normal, they're in everybody, typically. And one of the issues is the good bacteria, and that's why we always talk about the probiotics mm -hmm. so much, because probiotics help keep the bad guys under control. Uh, but the yeast actually have a, they, they do things, they break down certain foods and stuff that we eat um where we can't or none of the other bacteria can they actually help some of the of the digestive process if you will it's when they get overgrown it's when they're a problem and that's right. that's when and there's some out happen. there that you ain't supposed to have at all no there's a lot so there's some that yeah. get to be life-threatening we're, we're talking more today about the chronic winds right. and the kinds that people live with every day when you start talking about the life-threatening right. fungi and stuff that get in the lungs those can definitely get severe or bad and those are not supposed to be there no. so there, like I said, there's just so many different species but um what like are there said, any other symptoms besides the rash oh gosh the there's so many well it, there's there's books written about yeah. 
candida and yeast. And when it looks at the list of symptoms it can cause, it's huge. I mean, weight gain's a big one. People that cannot lose weight, a lot of times it is yeast. Um, mm. So weight gain, yep. you can have constipation, diarrhea, acne. A lot of acne, even in kids, can be yeast. Um, so there's a lot of things, there is a list, name a symptom and it can cause it. And everybody's different on which ones they have. Sure. But I would say fatigue um, is a big one. And actually weight gain in a lot of people is a big yeah. one. Well, when you talk about yeast infections, you normally think that there's something that, uh, that mainly uh, uh, happens in women. And that's yep. not, is that oh. true? No. It happens. We see it a lot in um, college age guys drinking too much beer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we really do because yeast, Truth. how do they make beer? Yeast. Yeah. You know, most alcohol, but, but I mean, there's a lot of yeast still in beer. And yeah. you will see because of actually drink, eating, eating too much yeast is another cause. Um, eating huge amounts of yeast will actually make it overgrow in your body too. Yeah. So, Which is usually in bread. Bread and it, beer's a big one, just beer. because I do see these young boys and they come yeah. in and they have these, and they call it a sun, like if they get in the sun, anybody that gets in the sun and when they get a little hot, they get almost like what they call a, ra a like a rash. Right. Mm -hmm. That's usually yeast yeah. because the stuff we use and do to help with yeast, it helps it. That's why you wear sunscreen. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't help, help the yeast. Really? Oh, no. Ah. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Ah. It's more about the hot moisture. I don't care if you got sunscreen on. Yeah, if you're hot and moist in South Mississippi, it can come out through the skin. And in the summertime here, you're going to be hot and moist. We do. Oh yeah. I mean, it is getting that way. I mean, while looking at uh, and people uh, that Leslie's uh, yeah. forecast. For yeah, the, I know. I mean, people that exercise a lot and are out sweating a lot, we yeah. see a lot of that in them because it comes out. That's when you people when they see it is more when they pay attention to yeah. it. It's more like, oh my gosh, something's going on. Yeah, if you don't see the symptoms. Uh, or see the, the you yeast don't know outer. what it is. You really don't know that it's there because it's the 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 fungi and yeast or the candida specifically uh, that cause most of this stuff. It's been there all the time. It's it's just normal part of your normal flora and your microbiome. But you will start gut. feeling really bad yeah. when it starts getting overgrown, and you might not know why. Yeah. So that is something. And diabetics are also really bad about getting it right. because sure. they sugar feeds yeast and everything. Think about it when you even make bread. If you're out there making bread, you got to put a little bit of something sugar in it to make the yeast activate mm -hmm. when you're making bread. Mm -hmm. So if you have a lot of sugar in your body, that activates it a lot. Yep. So wow. it makes it grow. Wow. Yep. 896-0713 or 800-349-0713. We're talking about yeast infections and fungi this morning. So if you uh, have any questions regarding that or anything regarding your health, pick up the phone and give us a call. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back to our Monday morning live edition of the Doctor's Nutrition Show. Jim Tabor along with Dr. Jim and Janine Fox. We're talking about yeast um, infections and fungi this morning. Uh, if you have got a question, give us a call 896-0713, 800-349-0713. What kind of problems, if this, if this goes untreated, what kind of problems can it uh, cause? Uh, those people get really sick. I mean, they get very sick. <clears throat> it's like she's talking about, you know, one of the biggies is fatigue. And you see some of these people, matter of fact, we get them in a lot of times and they've been diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. Mm -hmm. Well, chronic fatigue syndrome is a wastebasket diagnosis. Something else is wrong. What's causing it? That's what you have to ask. And a lot of times it's something like these underlying yeast and uh, overgrowth. Yeah, and some of the worst ones I've seen over the years were guys. Yeah. So, and they don't have any clue because they don't have it in the same areas that women do. Mm -hmm. So they don't know. Yeah. And so it definitely can, make make you to where you can barely go and so we do see a lot of it i mean there's no doubt and if you think well, about you say, it, i'm sorry I, go ahead well i was gonna say if you think about it too the, these yeast as they grow and multiply and die off and so on they give off a lot of toxic material mm -hmm. and the toxins are just they're just gonna make you feel yucky you mm -hmm. know and again you know if you get bad enough you know have people died from it sure wow yeah, yeah i mean yeah, there's people have been and you know the cause of death was some sort of um uncontrollable yeast infection and it can literally shut you down you know so well, that, yeah. that's not the norm it's not the norm right it but really you ask how far could but it yet go? how yeah. far can it go it can go that yeah. far and, and as you said earlier i mean our environment that we live in here locally i mean it could contribute to it, <laughs> oh, uh, it can. Perfect, really bad. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't we have couldn't a lot of mold we have mold everywhere i mean we we have a a, t a test that you can do to check for mold toxins and it tells you what toxins and how high they are. Well, we don't really even do it much anymore because I tell people that want to do it, I'm like, well, I have never done one in South Mississippi where it was normal. 
we all Never. have mold toxins. Hmm. Never. It is kind of scary because the aspergillus is one of the big molds in this area. Yeah. And I've had some people in North Mississippi that didn't have it, but I've had everybody here. I have never had a person I did that mold test on that did not show it. Wow. So we're around mold a lot and people don't think about that. But when you have hot moisture, that is one of the problems. Yeah. Well, um, how is the yeast infection, how is it treated naturally? How do you treat it naturally? There's actually, I always say there's a three-pronged approach. Uh, yeah, it's multi-pronged, let's put it that way. Yeah, you can't just do one thing because, number one, you have to stop feeding it. That's and that is the sugar and the yeast. You know, things that are sugar, if you're diabetic, you gotta lower your sugar. You gotta, you gotta get off of sugar whether you're diabetic or not, actually, right. to, to help with yeast. I always right. tell people, it's like, if you have a fire, and you're trying to put it out, but yet you're pouring gas on the other side of it, how easy is that gonna be to put out? Not at all. Because when there's gas being put on the fire, it ain't going anywhere. Yeah. So that's kind of like you have to change your diet. So mm -hmm. diet change and getting off of anything that has yeast in it, that makes a big difference. E even things like fermented pickles and so on. Yep, okay. fermented mm -hmm. foods have fermented, yeast. Fermented foods. Really? Mm -hmm. well, that's, so even that's... if it doesn't have sugar, it's fermented and you do have to have, you know, you know, that, that definitely so those, makes a uh, those pickled quail eggs probably aren't good for you. <laughs> well, if, if most people without an overgrowth, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. A or Polish sausage, actually, a pickled yeah. Polish sausage. Yeah. Yeah. Fermented foods are good for you because it actually also has your good bacteria, but right. it's only, all, only when someone has a problem yeah. that they really shouldn't do those right. at all. Um, and then the other two things is you always have to replace your probiotics because a lot of yeast infections are caused from antibiotic use. Yeah. Even long, um, even when you were a kid, if you took tons of antibiotics, 20 years later, you may have this overgrowth and it's because you, little by little, it grew and grew and grew through all the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you never, yeah. you know, if you have, if you take antibiotics and you never replenish or restore the normal microbiome yeah. in your gut, then 10 years from now, you know, because a lot of times I'll ask somebody, you know, if, if they've had antibiotics, well, no, I, six months ago. Okay, six months ago is pretty recent. Yeah. What about six years ago? And the thing is, when you start replacing all those good bacteria, it takes a lot of them for a long time. Mm -hmm. And that's why we suggest it as a daily regimen. If you don't do anything else, take you some probiotics. Yeah, I do. The Flora yeah. 50 B. Yeah. I've right. taken it, yeah. uh, take it every right. day. Yeah. And then also the third thing is to take something that kills it. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of natural products actually can help with killing it and helping it. And I mean, yeah. we have the olive leaf extract, um, a grapefruit seed extract, even colloidal silver can mm -hmm. help, oregano can help. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of different things that you can actually use. Garlic actually helps with yeast. Right. So you can do garlic, you can even eat garlic cloves. Um, you'll stink a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> it, you well, can do that. So yeah. there's a lot of natural things that you can do to help kill it. All right, we have a question. How do you know it's a yeast infection from normal discharge? Well, probably one of the, well, the 100% the way of knowing is to go to your doctor and get it cultured. I yeah. mean, they'll be able to tell, that's the only 100% way of knowing if, a, if it's a discharge, and we do not do those. So, but go to your doctor and get it checked. But just as a whole, the smell is a big thing. Yeah, the odor is usually um, a Odor is different. usually a lot with yeast, and normal discharge does not. So that is one thing. Now, bacterial dish will, will as well. So mm -hmm. any type of an overgrowth, bacteria or yeast will actually make smell. And usually there's a lot of itching to where normal discharge, you don't have a lot of itching. Mm -hmm. So you will, the itching and the smell would probably be the two things I'd say that you can kind of see, do I need to go get it checked? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 8960713 or 800-349-0713. We're talking about yeast infections and fungi this morning. Yep. And, um, and how, you know, if you have an issue with it or whether it's recurring, whether it's a, a one-time thing or whatever, um, how to treat it. Uh, so it doesn't it doesn't recur, right? Um, and well, it, and about recurrence, yeast is hard to get rid of. Yeah. It is not an easy thing. I always tell people it's kind of like the mold in your shower. You put Clorox on it or something, and it's gone. But if you don't keep doing something, it comes back in the same exact spot. So yeah. it was really not really gone. Well, the, you the can thing, knock the symptoms down, but yet it still right. might be there. And you think about you know the the normal microbiome mm -hmm. contains things like candida, and, and there's like four or five different species that are fairly common, um, the albicans and so on. And so they're there. So you don't ever really get rid of it. What you do is you get it under control. 
and you keep it under control with the good bacteria yeah. that, the, you know, that, that actually the, they play against each other. And that's what we have to do. And you know, food, you know, and we bring this up a lot uh, talking to people about food. People don't realize how much antibiotics is, but there's something like 30 some million pounds of antibiotics used in, in animal feed every year. And who's eating those animals? Us. Wow. So. Well, we're always, not, because we, we eat organic meat. We eat organically, <laughs> if we can. <laughs> we eat organ we and organic meat, it. that's one of the benefits of doing it. Yeah. Is, you know, yeah. actually right. organic is that you don't get all the antibiotics. All right, exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have another question. We'll get to that in just a moment. We're going to take a break. 896-0713 or 800-349-0713. We'll come back with your question and this week's special. And welcome back. It's our final segment of the morning. And uh, we have a question. What do you do for fungi on toenails, fingernails yep. or toenails? We, that's another very, very common one. It, it's real common. And, and it takes, you know, before we even tell you what it is, it's going to take a long time to get rid of it, no matter what you do. And... You know, the, the thing, we have to treat it internally and externally both, mm -hmm. really. Uh, that's what the, causes it? A well, fungus. It's just a fungus. It's just a the, fungus, and again, they can have different kinds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it is just a fungus, and there is no doubt keeping your hands in water. A lot of, you know, women that... And feet are especially, like that. Feet are yeah. especially yeah. prone to... Things that are in water or exposed to... I have a lot of people that have come up with it after they, you know, went somewhere and they were in the water or the, mm -hmm. you know, some something happened, and then they get all this nail fungus but um we definitely what we like to use is the olive ear um, and the olive ear will do a mm -hmm. higher dose and for it might take four to six months but even when you do the prescription yeah. medications it takes four to six months it's like the, it's not just not it's quick. not quick now on topically we'll also use something like tea tree oil we even have one that has a little brush on it like a fingernail polish but it's tea tree oil to put on the nails mm -hmm. yeah. because it's easy just to kind of brush it on there so doing external and yeah. internal is the best and staying off of sugar again if you keep feeding yeah. it and like i said most of that stuff comes from internal and so if you keep doing foods that are really good and actually keep your immune system up that's one of the big things like you know he's mentioned a few times is we have it in our bodies it's one way it gets overgrown is when our immune systems get compromised right. and your immune system can get compromised whether it's killing off your good bacteria by antibiotics or just being stressed and run down and your immune system goes down so keeping the immune system up is also a big factor making sure your vitamin d levels are normal mm -hmm. so there's a lot of things that you can do to actually help so it can be pre uh, you can prevent it from recurring you can help it yeah, can yes help. once yeah. someone's prone to yeast their environment and their body, you know, is probably good for it. And so it is harder for someone that is prone to it. And it, it takes a lot. You know, when we talk about probiotics and a lot of people say, well, yeah, well, I, eat, I eat yogurt. Okay, you know, a cup of yogurt, a good one, okay, will probably have a couple hundred thousand colony forming units or CFUs. And you'll see that on, on probiotics. And so a couple hundred thousand CFUs, oh, that's a lot, right? You know, we start at like 50 billion yeah. and we'll go up from there. Um, I mean, literally for somebody, especially somebody has got a problem, if they got a problem like a, a nail fungus or they've got a vaginal yeah. disrupt, it's going to be probably a hundred billion, billion. And I've seen people that actually, I mean, not people, I've seen yogurt, like one kind that had a huge amount and it was so terrible you could It was a Bulgarian one you <laughs> bought? It's bad. She bought one with I couldn't eat it. I, mean, I was like, oh, this has so much in it. I'm going to buy this. And it was, ooh. Come here, Lexi. So <laughs> most, most people, I, they wouldn't even eat it. They wouldn't eat it. Dogs wouldn't eat it. <laughs> dogs wouldn't eat it. It's nothing rough. Right? So th that's the problem. So you really do want to, you know, yeah. somebody just asked another question. Yeah. Uh, where can you buy? Um, but well, before we get to that question, yep. let's go ahead and look at this week's special okay. before we run out of time. Yeah. Um, there we go. Yeah, AF Essentials, and this is, is a formula we put together. It's got the olive leaf, it's got the uh, grapefruit seed extract, which is a great one to kill it. Got berberine. It's berberine. It's, it's really loaded up with everything to keep this stuff yep. under control. It's got caprylic acid, right. and it has your like hemicellulase and cellulase to actually help. Yeast can actually get a biofilm around it right. that keeps anything from killing it. And it so AF itself. Essentials has the stuff to actually help dissolve the biofilm and things that actually can help with the yeast itself. Right. So, and AF stands for antifungal. Mm -hmm. So, because <laughs> people go. are always there saying, what go. does AF stand for? Yeah, antifungal. antifungal. Okay. So it is an antifungal. Like I said, it does have a little bit of the olive leaf. We use olive leaf a lot by itself for other things like sinuses, olive leaf, um, the olive, 
by itself, the olive ear works really good in sinuses. And I found that it works better in sinuses than the AF essentials. And so a lot of your sinus infections that people run to the doctor and get another antibiotic mm -hmm. for is fungus is, is first actually place. a fungus. So if you'll treat that fungus, uh, rather than hit it with another antibiotic, a lot of times we find these people, oh, I, I, I cleared it up and it hasn't yep. come back. Fantastic. And the good thing about olive ear is it's antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, antiparasite. So yeah. it's kind of a catch-all. Yeah. So, and it does not hurt the good bacteria. Right. So that is the good thing about That's the olive ear. a good, a good yep. thing, yeah. Okay. Uh, question, where can you buy organic items? Depending on yeah. what you're looking for. You know, locally, you know, what we have to do is badger the, the, the grocery store people. Badger them. They have some you, stuff that, and it's they've more got organic. Some, they, yeah. They've got It'll some stuff, more. yeah. You know, and, but badger them to get more. Your vegetables, okay. I mean, we buy, because we, we do buy, we try to eat almost everything organic. Yeah. Um, I will say Rouse's and actually some of this, some of the Walmarts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And every Walmart has something different. So yeah. you have to look at different ones to see what they have. Yeah. Um, we go to the one by the mall and it does have a lot of good organic food. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to meat, because we were talking just a minute ago about the meat having right. the antibiotics, because your yeah. vegetables don't necessarily have the antibiotics, it's usually the meat. It, you don't get a lot around here. No. Um, honestly, it is, and unless you have a farmer find. that butchers a cow for you or something yeah. like but, that. But well, even then, you, you, you got to be you careful, be careful that it, it, that's yeah, right, it's they know what organic yeah, means. Yeah, just because yeah. it's or, just because it's been butchered doesn't mean that it's actually True. organic. Now, Whole Foods, which is New Orleans and Mobile, does have some organic food. Mm -hmm. We buy a lot of our meat from a place called Blackwing Meat, which we get it shipped to us on dry ice, and it is certified organic, mm -hmm. and it is, you know, grass-fed, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, you just... And if you go to that web, their website, Blackwing Meat, yeah. Or They've got all kinds of stuff. Oh, they there. do. I mean, Blackwing.com, I think. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like I said, there's different. I think I saw ostrich on unfortunately, there. Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, there's not just one place you can go around here and yeah. buy everything you need. So. And if you and if you know, they always ask you. You know, of course, I, it's probably just a knee-jerk reaction. But they always ask, "Did you find everything today?" No, I need more of this. You know, I'm looking for. Okay. <laughs> so tell them. You know, I mean, they probably hate to see me coming. It's like, oh god, yeah. <laughs> because I'm gonna tell them. You know, hey, look, I'd, if oh, you had really this did. organic stuff, I'd buy it. You know, mm -hmm. and. And but then when they do get it in, buy it. You're going to pay a little more for mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But it's worth it. It really is. Well, one other thing uh, I wanted to ask about, uh, you know, fungi and all this stuff. What about? I mean, we get. Can we get it in our noses? Sure. Sinuses. Well, sinuses. Sinuses. Sure. Def definitely. One of the we see it a lot in sinuses mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. So that's kind of one of the things that we hear of a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and that, like I said, the olive oil makes a big difference. For toenails, I mean, you see people walking around all the time with their nose spray. For toenails oh, yeah. oh, and, yeah. and sinuses, we do, and you can even use silver. Now, we have a colloidal silver that you spray up your nose, mm -hmm. and it's really good for yeast. I don't like internal, like constant drinking it, drinking it, drinking it every day, yeah, no. but the sinuses just sprayed right there, it does work really well. And occasionally you can take it by mouth if needed, and mm -hmm. we do use it in extreme cases of yeah. yeast. Okay. And then also, just, we didn't even mention, and this is a big part of yeast overgrowth, leaky gut, which we've talked about before, leaky gut sets up a yeast problem too. Yeah. So I mean, with oh, wow. just when you asked for the cause, we didn't mention that, but that's a, we've had shows on leaky gut. Yeah, we have. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have. We've had several things on that. All right, well, uh, next week is uh, will be the first Monday of the month, and you know what we always do on the first Monday of the month? Open line. Open line. Open line Monday. Yeah. So any yep. questions you might have, go ahead and jot them down. Uh, you can email them to me ahead of time if you want to at jtabor at wlox.com. Also, you can find a whole lot of other information on Doctors Nutrition's website, or you can go to their Facebook page. Uh, hope you have a wonderful week. Enjoy this beautiful weather, hmm. and we'll see you again next Monday morning here at 9 o'clock on WLOX CBS with the Doctors Nutrition Show. For more information on highlighting your business and services on Healthy Living South Mississippi, contact Jim Tabor at 896-1313.